and Smoky Lake Maple products. I want to go over a new facet on our latest model of stainless steel filter press. In every way, this filter press is superior to what people have seen in the maple industry before. It's pure stainless steel, and this one even has a stainless steel diaphragm pump on it. We don't deal with aluminum at all. Aluminum is not food grade. Um, the confusion that we're running into from some people is that on the new model of pump, the valve is different. In a past video, you might have seen there was a standard one-way ball valve here and here. This is completely different. We've assembled this now with a bypass. We haven't really advertised that these units have a bypass on them, but they do. Every single unit that you buy that has an air diaphragm pump on it, every one that, that's available has a bypass built into it. Um, there's no exception. They'll all have it, even though it's not advertised that way. Um, now, this is a T-port ball valve. There's L-port ball valves, which will literally switch flow from the center of the valve to either one of the outlets. This is a T-port. This will do every single possible combination. So you can't really reference handle location. A lot of people say, should my handle be up or down to bypass? Now, first of all, let's cover what the bypass function does. The bypass simply allows you to use this pump to pump liquid, whether you want to pump syrup or sap or any other liquid. The bypass just allows you to, to just use the pump without running everything through the, through the filter plates. In bypass mode, the liquid will enter the manifold. Either one of these locations, it's up to you. This is a, a, a like manifold. There's a port here and a port here. You can run your sap or syrup or whatever you want into either one of these ports. It will then bypass, if you have it in bypass mode, it'll bypass straight out this valve into whatever container you want. It won't even involve the, the filter press plates. And of course, you can flip the handle to a different position and it will direct the liquid down into the plates only. So let's cover how that works. Again, handle position makes no difference because I can take this valve, I can take the handle off, I can place this any which way. So handle position doesn't, is completely irrelevant. Now keep in mind, uh, when an instruction manual comes out for all these units, it will be uh, well covered. But um, what you need to reference is the stem of the ball valve. You see that there's a, a T-shape etched into the stem of the valve. Uh, if I were to flip the handle down like this, there's your capital T. Okay. The way that works is... And it might make more sense if I take this valve apart. I've already loosened it with a wrench. It's, it's not as if you can hand take this apart without loosening it. So I'm just going to loosen these. I don't have to take them off. I'm going to take off the T entrance. And I will then be able to pull the stem up slightly. And out comes the ball. Okay. Does this make sense now? There's a T port. All right. In this configuration, you can introduce sap so that all three ports are open to each other. You can configure it so that the port is open to the T and one of the sides from the T to one of the other sides. Or you can configure it so that it's open straight through both sides, but closed to the T. You see, every configuration is possible, and that's all delineated right here on that stem. So, you see, the flow can now come from the pump straight. It'll deadhead here. Nothing can come out here. It's showing that. There, there is no, no etch coming out here. It can't come out here. So it's deadheading here and going down into the plates. In this position, it can only get into the filter plates. Here's bypass. Now it's closed. It cannot go down into the plates. It's deadheading at this part of the valve and it's allowed through. Okay, here's a position you'll never use. Here it's deadheading the pump. What good is that? All right. Here's another position you'll never use. Now it's allowing liquid into the plates and bypassing, okay? 
familiarize yourself with what this stem is doing. You should be able to look at that stem and get a full understanding of what's going on. And just picture what I showed you inside this valve, if it's, if it's at all confusing. That tells the whole story. Mm -hmm. That should clear it up. This is uh, a video should make it a lot more clear than a, a phone conversation. Um, keep in mind handle position when you're talking to a, to one filter press operator uh, from yourself. That handle position means very little until you establish what the position of your stem is. Uh, you. And now that we have this filter press in hand, we can say, all right, handle straight up in the air is perfect. That, that's how we're going to filter. Handle straight forward, perfect. That's bypass. Here's the only positions you're ever going to use with this filter press. But if someone has ever removed this handle and turned it 90 degrees, the, the handle position no longer matters anymore. So keep that in mind, that, that the stem tells the whole story. There is no way that that could ever be wrong. There's no way that the filter press bypass valve could ever be assembled in a way where this would lie. It is always going to be, um, it's always going to tell you the truth. Thanks, Jim. Thank you.